it's been about a week so it's probably about eight days uh, so I thought I'd have a quick walk through the house and see what progress I've actually made I think I've done quite well so let's take a look around It's two weeks to my flight home and I've spent about a third of my budget. This part is my favorite because I get to pick the finishes on the house. What kind of granite I'm gonna use, tile color, paint color, what kind of laminate am I gonna use? All of those design factors go in to tell the story of the house. It's okay to make bold choices, but just remember you are selling for the masses and the ultimate goal here is to sell the house and make money. I've been having some trouble finding local help with things that I can't do. Plumbing, electrical, laying carpet, things like that. But when you're in a different city and you don't know anybody, the only way you can get help is to cold call. So I'm gonna keep cracking on, get this thing wrapped up and head home. So the kitchen's basically ready to go. Um, now I'm going to start working on the floor. Uh, it's a concrete slab, so you're really only left with two options. Um, you can do a laminate, which is what I'm going to do, or you can do an engineered floor, which is a glued down process. And believe me, that is horrible, but you may have a better experience than me. I had a terrible experience. I would never do that again. But that's just me. Anyway, so I'm doing laminate. Um, this tile still left on the ground, I don't have time to take that up. It's not gonna make any difference, laminate's gonna go right over the top. You have to sort the pad down first. This one's one of the cheaper ones, I'm not really here to break the bank, but I did go a bit more expensive with a laminate. Um, it's a cheap thing, and you put this side up, it says this side up, so silver side down. It also has a little flapping there, it goes over the next piece so you join them so there's no gaps in between. Okay, when you're choosing a laminate, this is a, a, a 12 millimeter laminate, so it's a bit thicker. A lot of the box stores, they sell eight millimeter laminate, and they're quite thin. Um, if you go a bit thicker, they become a bit more rigid, so you're looking at clip, clippity clop, um, that bouncing situation as you're walking across the floor. So anyway, so most important thing when you're doing this, do the prep work, get all the, the crap, sweep it up, get any divots or anything that's in the way, get it up, get nice and smooth, put the pad down first, do two layers, then start putting the laminate from the wall, put your spaces in, and start going across. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so the floor's going down quite nicely. Um, if you get it good at the start, it should move along quite easily. As long as everything's square, you'll be fine. If you're having trouble, connecting it and it's out of one end and not tied at this end, it means it's not square. Shim it out on one side, that will bring it square and it should drop right in. It has a lip here and a lip here, tongue and groove kind of situation. You just drop it in, slide it up to the next one, drop it down just like that, it'll go flat. And my handy tool over here has a curved edge. Just put that on the edge very carefully, give it a quick tap, drive it into the next one, and that's it. You just keep going along and along, keep coming. One thing you should definitely have is a dust mask. Um, this is like a cardboard microfiber based product. Microfibers are very bad. Um, they're literally microfibers. They go in the air, they get in your lungs, it's really nasty stuff. So one of these is definitely recommended in safety glasses, which obviously I don't have on right now. Um, and that's it. So I'm just gonna keep going along, adding more, about time to put more, more flooring. Um, barrier down here, it has a little piece of tape. You take the tape up, you put the next one right on top of it, nice tight seal on that, that's good. And like I said, really solid looking floor. No clippity clop because it's a thicker product. So I'm pretty happy and we'll move right along. And uh, that's about that for now. 
I finished up the rest of the laminate throughout the living room and it looks brilliant. On to the next project. Okay, so we're nearly uh, towards the end of the job, which is great. So uh, tired, it's been a long three weeks. So now we're just doing decorative stuff and a lot of uh, punch lists. So one of the things I'm gonna do is do some open shelves. They're really in right now and they're very inexpensive, which is good for us. Um, this is basically what I wanna make. Um, it's just a bunch of plumbing fittings. You just attach it on the wall like that and then you put the shelves in there and people love it. So it's pretty simple. Buy yourself some, some tubing, some bases. Some angle pieces and a couple of joiners there as well. And you literally just twist it on there, get it nice and tight. Make sure you get it to the right direction you want and just keep an add into it until eventually you get that. I mean, it's really simple, there's not much to it at all. And uh, just make sure you attach it properly to the wall. Chances are, people like to put dishes and pots and things like that, but they're quite heavy. Um, to make sure it attaches properly. If you can hit a stud, great. If you can't, use an anchor. And uh, that's pretty much that. It's done. It's been a really long day. I know you see those shows, HDTV, where the last night is so great and I like to spend a lot of time in here decorating. Well, that's really not the way it goes. I don't know anyone that has a relaxing last day. It's mayhem trying to get everything done. There's 12 trillion things. You make a list and then you make another list and then you make another list. It's exhausting. I've been up early. It's now like 9.30 or something. It's been a very long day. So I am done. That cooler is full of beer. That's where I'm off to. Oh, the art of flipping. Just when you think everything is all set, you have a problem and oh boy do I have a problem. The house is done, the floor's down, the cabinets are in, the granite's in, painting's done, the whole house is looking fantastic. But wait, when the plumber cut the pipe, what was from the wall, uh, it was a loop and that loop fed the shower and it fed the kitchen sink. So now, neither one have any water, and it is a major catastrophe, and uh, I don't really know what to do. It's two in the morning. I've been up since 5.30. It's been an incredibly long day. Um, the plumber's gonna be here tomorrow at noon, not very early, but uh, I think I have an idea of how to run two new lines. It's just ridiculous this late in the game. But hey, that's the art of flipping. You know, you just get on with it or you flip out. So, I'm not gonna flip out just yet. So the plumber came by, ran two new lines down from the attic, fed the whole system, water's on, problem solved, and the house is finally done.
I purchased a house for $56,200. I managed to keep my renovation costs at $18,000. I originally listed the house for $125,000. After about four weeks on the market, I received an offer for $117,000 and I accepted. After closing and holding costs, my profit was $22,800. Not bad for three weeks work. Next time on The Flipping Road. I get myself a new project with tons and tons of potential. But I quickly discover this house is a mess. If it's gonna go wrong, it can go wrong. And honestly, it pushes my sanity to the limit. But like all my projects, it comes out flipping brilliant. My name's Greg Hickey. This is On The Flipping Road. Please remember to subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Thanks.